welcome to my channel, Crafty Thoughts DIYs. I put together a Halloween inspiration video to help you get a jump start on your Halloween crafting and decorating. Okay, let's get into it. So when I'm using hardware that I made into a book shape, you can take an old book, you can decorate right directly onto the book. You can make a cover for it out of kind of paper or a brown paper bag. Dryer sheets and tissue paper to give the book some texture. This is going to be the pupil in my eye. I'm using one of these glass rocks, it's flat on the bottom. how it looks with the people behind it. I just want to go right now with the pocket and just kind of have it fill up around the eyes a little bit. And that might look better. And just sitting there on top. Now using my hot glue gun, I'm going to write the word spells. adding some other designs to the book. I'm going to write spells on the side of the spine of the book. I may use some other colors as well, but right now that's what we're going with to start. I'm just going to sponge over the whole thing using this nutmeg brown first. Being careful not to go over my glass eye. and my designs that I drew with the hot glue. Then I'm going to take my crown and go back and cover up 
some of the black that touched outside of the letters and designs. Got a little bit of paint behind me. Yes. I think we'll just scrape that off pretty easily. And then I'm going to repeat the same process on the spine and back. using part of an old bracelet to make a lot for the book, I guess you could say. Also made of potions, but yeah, I'm going to show you how I'm making window silhouettes for Halloween. This is a witch, and this is a vampire. For my video, I'm going to show you how I'm making a Frankenstein. Let's get started. The first thing I did was measure my window so I know how big I wanted my silhouette to be. Then my sketch pad, I drew it all out. Now I'm going to draw it on a big piece of cardboard. This is where you could use it outside. You could do this with plywood also, but since mine are just going to be inside the window, I'm using cardboard. You could also use poster board or foam board or even craft paper to do this. Now I've got my Frankenstein drawn on my cardboard and I'm going to use a utility knife to cut it out. Now the Frankie's all cut out, I'm going to paint in black. You can use spray paint if you want to, I'm using acrylic paint. Now that I've got them all painted, I'm going to let them finish drying. I'm going to get start time. I'm going to show you how they look in the windows. I'm going to put colored lights behind them. You can do the same thing if you make these out of wood and use them outside. You can put a string of lights behind them and make them glow. They look great. So, see you this evening. First game I'm making is Lummy Tin Can Bowling. It's going to take a tin can. When you open your can, don't completely cut the top off. This way, we can take hot glue around this to seal the can up. I'm just going to take some white paint or white paint.
the bottom of our can is now going to be the top. And you see at the bottom of this all sealed up. Then we're going to take pieces of fabric. You can use gauze or whatever you would like. You can even just paint the can if you want to. You don't have to do all of the mummies either. You could do other Halloween characters, witches, Frankensteins, vampires. You could even do pumpkins. the can is completely covered. I'm going to pick a good spot that I want to put the eyes. I'm choosing right here. I'm going to do the fabric back just a little bit. That's the glue. And I'm going to add my wiggly eyes. Now we need something to knock the cans over with. We're going to make bean bags. I'm putting chickpeas in my bags, but you could use beans or rice or sand. These pieces of fabric that I'm using are about four inches by nine inches. I didn't measure them, I just eyeballed them. Then we fold it over. Make sure we press it down really good to completely seal it off because you don't want your filling to come out. I'm just gonna stick my finger in here, make sure it's all sealed up real good. Once I get as much in as I want, I'm just gonna put some glue here to seal at the top. use any material that you wanted. I chose this one. There's a pair of old pants and they had this orange and black stripe on the side. So I thought that was good for Halloween. I'm making a purple people eater. I've got a box and I've already painted purple. Now we're going to cut out its mouth. Bring that where I'd like the mouth to be. We're going to about center ways. These are going to be my monster teeth. I drew monster teeth on a piece of plain white paper and then I used this glow in the dark glitter glue so the teeth will glow in the dark. using white and black color paint.
going to give him wings because after all, the purple people here can fly. Now we need to add a horn. So my horn is just a piece of scrap of paper, but I don't know if I have a video on my channel of how to make a paper horn or cone. I'm going to add a little bit of hair. Obviously, you can make any monster that you would like to. You can also make your purple people eater look however you want to. Now I need some monster food to keep it from eating people. And I have these different colored ping pong balls. A ghost pick for floral arrangements. First thing you want to do is get a piece of white material or whatever color you want to make your ghosts out of. And then I'm just going to take a marker and draw my ghost onto the material. Now I'm going to cut the ghost out. I'm going to separate the two ghosts, and the one with the marker on it is going to be on the inside, so you're not going to see that marker. And then your other piece that you cut out is going to go on top. You want to make sure you keep them in the right alignment so that they match up when you glue them together. Now I'm going to take one of these 12-inch wood dowel rods from Dollar Tree and glue it to this, to the ghost. Now I'm going to go around the ghost with some glue. I'm starting up here at the head. I'm going to go all the way around the ghost, but I'm going to leave the bottom open so that I can stuff it. I'm just going to take my stuffing and stuff my ghost. I'm going to work the stuffing into the hand using the handle of my paintbrush here. Now that I have my ghost all full up with stuffing, I'm going to close up the bottom. I'm going to draw on eyes and a mouth. And my little ghost is done. This is a spectacular addition to Halloween flower arrangement. Next project, we're going to make little ghost pillows. For this one, I'm using a pattern that I've made out of cardboard, a larger piece of white material, a small piece of black for the eyes and the mouth, and then ribbon. Mine's orange says boo on it. I'll lay the pattern down and trace it. I'm going to separate the two pieces. The piece with the marker outline on it is going to go inside. Let's trace around with the hot glue. 
making sure we put the right piece on top so that they line up. Now we're going to turn it inside out. Now, this is optional. I did turn my other one inside out, but I want this one to look a little different. You get your go so nice and full. Sell up the box. I'm going to cut out the eyes and mouth. I'm going to fold my black material over like this so that I can get my eyes to look approximately the same. I'm just going to cut out an own full shape. sort of a teardrop shape for the mouth. I'm going to take my ribbon and create a bow. There we go. Cute little ghost field. Okay, now to this last project. I'm making this cute little candle ghost thing here. The ghost is stuffed with uh, garbanzo beans. You could use sand or regular beans or rice, whatever you choose. Now, once again, I'm just drawing my ghost onto my fabric. separate the two pieces and the side with the marker on it is going to be inside. And I hot glue the two pieces together. Make sure we leave the bottom open so that we can put our filling in. You could also stuff this with polyfill or whatever you use to stuff your stuff things if you wanted to. I'm just doing mine with the garbanzo beans so for the weight. Come in toward the arms. Now that it's all full up, I'm going to close up the bottom. Now I'm going to take a marker and draw on the eyes and mouth. Yeah. I'm taking this half of the glitter pumpkin from another project. And I'm going to cut off the bottom so that it's flat. And we'll sit like I need it to with the hips. I'm just taking some spider web. I'm not going to glue it on. I'm just going to kind of drape it around like so. Now these are battery operated tea lights that I got from Dollar Tree. 
Spin it in there. Here we go. A Halloween um, road sign, like a direction sign. And this is what I'm working with. This is just all scrap wood. All of the wood I'm using is just all scrap wood that I already had here at the house. I just made this little cross section thing here and with a post on it. And then these are my arrows, just some old scrap wood. We've got coins on the ends of them. And these already have all these splits and cracks and everything in them. And I'm leaving them. I did sand them down so that they're not sharp. There's no jagged edges. They just look rough. And I'm going to leave them that way because I have a lead sign. So the first thing I'm gonna do is paint my posts all black. And then I'm gonna work on the arrows. And the arrows, one's gonna say which way, the other one's gonna say uh, Goblin Alley and, or Ghost Alley and Goblin Street. Like to, you could even not hang it, it's perfectly optional. I'm going to work on the arrows, just determining which direction I want them to point. Because I'm going to have two this way and one that way. Paint my arrows with this one's vivid orange, violet pansy, and lime green. And I'm going to put the orange one in the middle, so that's what I'm using on this one here. I'm not going to paint the sides. I'm only going to paint the top of the arrow. I have one that I'll show you later in the video that I made for fall. It's made out of cardboard that I use indoors. This is that lime green. It's a brilliant color. Now for the purple one. While we're waiting on that one to dry, I'm gonna show you the one that I made for fall. I made a topper sign for this, Happy Harvest Farm. This one was uh, made out of the arrows and the little sign here. It's made out of cardboard. This is wood, however. And then an arrow says, hey rides, apple orchard, pumpkin patch. And then I made this down here at the bottom, this is all out of cardboard also, pumpkins, apples. And then I put on some, some leaves. And I usually put this in my front window around after after Halloween. Now on the top of my signpost, I'm gonna be putting this skull. This is one of those styrofoam skulls that's just plain from Dollar Tree, and I painted this last year. You can see kind of the greenish to the eyes. That is um, glow in the dark glitter blue, and it really does work. I had to use like six coats to finally get it the way I wanted it to look, but it does work. Then I just painted this guy up, and uh, he sat on my mantle last year. This year, he's going on top of my Halloween signpost. All right, I'm gonna take my sanding block and just scuff them up a little bit, take some of the paint, just so they look more Halloween. Too much, just enough. Okay, so now I'm going to put the writing on the arrows. This one actually just pointed this direction, and this one is going to say which way. Now I'm just going to freehand the letters on, but you could use a vinyl if you have a Cricut, stickers, stencils, whatever you want to do to get your words onto your sign. Okay, now this one is going to say Ghost Alley. You can put whatever you want to on your signs. And now for Goblin Street. Okay, now all my signs dry, the letters are dry, so I'm going to just read them onto the sign. First, I'm going to put my ball head on. To decorate the sign up a little bit. I'm going to add some spider webs and spiders, maybe some leaves. We'll just go with the flow. Yeah. 
Okay, so I've decided not to add any leaves to my sign. I like it just the way it is with the spider webs and the spider and the skull on top. Let me know down in the comments, if you were making one of these, what would you put on your direction signs? And I'm going to make like a witch's legs coming up out of the cold and she's fallen in. So I have this pot and for her legs, I'm using these sticks that I got out of my yard. They're both about the same diameter, about the right length that I wanted. And I'm using this Nightmare Before Christmas material to cover the sticks with, so it's like her leggings or her stockings. Then I'm using this um, stuffing that came from an old couch cushions. And this is um, cardboard from an egg carton. I cut it to fit inside of the cauldron like this. Made holes for the legs to go down in so they'll stick up. So let's cover our legs. to assemble the cauldron. I'll put the cardboard in. I'll put the legs through these holes. Some hot glue to help secure them holding in place. These are my little witch boots I've already made. I'm going to show you how to do it though. I drew my witch boot, the shape that I wanted on a piece of paper, cut it out. Then I have doubled over black material. And then this, uh, I think it's called batting. It's in a, from an inside of a comforter. Then I just put this on top and cut it all out. Once it was cut out, then I trimmed about a quarter of an inch or so all the way around. So that way, whenever I sewed up the boot, the batting would be inside and not be seen. And then I took um, some beads and sewed them to the boots. Look like our little decorations on there. I'm going to take this Happy Halloween ribbon and just put it around the pot. Here we go. Cute little witch falling in our cauldron. Okay, for this project, I'm using this stick that I found in my yard this summer. My husband and I were doing yard work. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, which bird? So that's what I'm making with this. I went in my yard and I found these dried out weeds that look kind of Halloween. -y. And so I thought I would use these to make the bristles of my bird. And you could use whatever you like, raffia, um, one of the hula skirts from Dollar Tree that they had in the summertime, anything, stroll. But I'm just choosing to use this. I get all gathered up here the way I want it. I'm going to take some twine and tie it. You could add a bow to it. I'm going to leave mine just plain like this. You can get a better shot of it here. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you found some inspiration for this spooky season. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.